From the previous video, I have this picture here that shows the graphics processing pipeline. We input vertex attributes to a vertex shader. Vertex shader must output a position. The hardware uses that to do some interpolation we'll talk about later. But for now, all the data sent out from the vertex shader will just be sent into the fragment shader. Fragment shader will one, run once for every pixel, essentially. That needs to be covered up and then output an RGBA color that determines the actual pixel color. Let's write some shaders and see if we can get a simple hello world basic shader pipeline going. Remember our colors right now are set to red but the only thing that comes out when we run the program are these white triangles here. Nothing against white but I want to use those attributes that we have. So looking at our program from a bird's eye view we have initialized GL and then here's all the code that sends our data down to the graphics card. So I'm actually going to highlight all this. Control X and hit enter a few times. Zoom in a little bit just for your viewing pleasure. Hopefully you've turned the video up to high definition. Void send data to open GL. I'm going to paste this in here. What I'm doing is very dirty. I should probably make this a member function of me GL window but I am considering this project to be a scratch pad. I don't really care that I'm doing dirty things here. I'm just trying to get something cool to happen. And there we go. Let's send data to, oh, oops, I hit control O there, to OpenGL. Control F5. Let's just make sure our program still builds and runs. Looks like it does. We're good. Uh, install shaders. All right, this is going to be a function we write, just a helper function, much like send data to OpenGL. And there we go. We Recall we have to write at least two types of shaders, a vertex shader and a fragment shader. We're going to write it using GLSL, GL shading language. And I think the easiest way to kind of keep this organized, and, and believe me, what I'm doing is so bad practice. If you want to see good practice, Go to my game engine programming playlist. I'm pretty meticulous about good practices there. But for now, I just want to write some shader code, send it down to OpenGL. So add new item uh, source. Let's call it me shader code dot cpp. And shader code, it's literally strings that we send to OpenGL, and OpenGL compiles right there. Essentially at runtime, it's compile time for the shader code, but it's runtime for us. Uh, why do we do that? Because from graphics card to graphics card, the instructions can be different. So, so we will compile our shader code when we run our program. I'm going to say new vertical tab group, conch char star vertex shader code. And I'm actually just going to do this using strings. Uh, very quickly, though, we shall... Uh, write our code in files, load the files up, and send them down to OpenGL. For now, I just want a basic hello world going on here. Pound version. There's several versions of shader code. The latest, I believe, is version 4.30. So we have to def we have to declare our version here so GLSL knows what, what can it can expect. And hopefully your hardware supports this version. If your graphics card hardware does not support this version, you will get a compile error which you'll see soon. Uh, I'm not sure why, but Open or GLSL is very picky about having a carriage return line feed at the end of the version there. All right, at that point, we need an entry point for our shader code. And, and it just so happens that the entry point's named main. Go figure. You'll notice that shader code looks a lot like C or even has some things that look a little bit like objects, but we'll get to that. Void main, curly, curly. And then if you recall... Let me bring the diagram back up here. The vertex attributes get sent to the vertex shader via OpenGL. The, the, we're essentially using OpenGL to configure the hardware to send our vertex attributes one by one into the vertex shader. So we need a way inside of our vertex shader to intercept or accept those attributes in. I'm going to control L and control V there, just get a few more lines. And it's pretty simple. We say in layout location equals zero vec2 position. All right, that's probably a lot to swallow. Let's look again at our send data to OpenGL function. I'll open this. And if you recall, 
this is one vertex, and here's another vertex, and here's another vertex. The first two floats right here are the position. We described that to OpenGL saying, hey, vertex a trib pointer. For attribute zero, expect two floats. All right, two floats. Well, look at this. For attribute zero, this zero here has to correspond and be the exact same zero that is right here. We're just we're saying what a GL vertex attribute zero is. It's attribute zero, two floats. Attribute zero, it's going to be two floats. And I'll tell you a little secret I probably shouldn't tell you, but underneath the hood, it's it's always four floats. But for now, I'm just going to say two floats. Uh, OpenGL will widen it to four floats. I, I probably shouldn't have said that. Don't worry about it. Okay. Two floats. Two floats. That's vector two, two floats. Well, I told you earlier that we need to send that position out so that the hardware knows which vertices to cover. Okay, with our triangles, it, it, it uses those vertices positions to figure out what fragments to cover. Sorry, what pixels to cover. We need to we need to output a position, and there just so happens to be a special little variable called GL position. It's it's a defined variable for OpenGL or GLSL that we need to write to or set to to be the position that we output, okay? I told you we need to output a position here. We're not going to do anything special with the position that comes in. We're just going to turn around and say, all right, the position of this vertex on the screen is the position that came in for that zeroth attribute. All right, but one thing about GL position, it's a vec4, vector4. It's a four element vector and we're having a vector two here. So I just can't assign a vector two to a vector four. But GLSL is pretty flexible. I can say, hey, vec four, take your first two floats from position because position is two floats. And then the third element or the Z element is zero. And then 1.0 out here, this goes back to homogeneous coordinates. Go watch my homogeneous coordinates videos in the Game Engine playlist if you want to learn more about that. But just trust me, take your two floats from here. You can ignore this for now, except you know you need to put it in. That's the position we're outputting for the hardware, so the hardware knows exactly which fragments we're covering. And that is our vertex shader code. Now, this is just some conch char star I threw in this compilation unit. Again, this is very dirty programming, but I didn't want to write it all in this file. So what I'm going to do in this file is I'm going to say extern const char star vertex shader code. And the extern keyword tells the compiler, hey, this is defined elsewhere. It's going to be defined in this compilation unit. The linker, it's up to the linker to patch that up. Uh, at link time. If you don't understand the compilation process from preprocessor to compiler to linker, you want to know more about that, go look at some of the first playlists in my C++ videos. I talk about that heavily. So there you go. That is all the code necessary for our basic Hello World vertex shader. It doesn't do anything fancy. Believe me, we will do fancy stuff in here. We're just trying to do the basics. Now we need to write a fragment shader. Let's do exactly that. Same thing, const char star fragment shader code gets, and then double quotes, control L to cut it, control V, 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 uh, to give me some double quotes. Again, these are constant strings. I'll show you how to pull this from a file, not too far out. Okay, same idea, pound version, 4.3, backslash R, backslash N. And pulling in our diagram, here's our diagram. Remember the fragment shader, all it needs to do is output an RGBA color. Each one of these is a float. Okay, and the way we do floats in GLSL or pretty much any shading language is, is especially how, how we do four floats is VEC4. All right, so here we go. Out VEC4 the color. Okay, hopefully the out, out makes sense. We're sending the color out of the fragment shader. GLSL is expecting a, a VEC4, an out variable of VEC4, and it will use that as the color. I didn't stress the in very much here, but the in is, again, just the vertex attributes coming into the vertex shader. That's why I have in there. And then we need a main in here. Let's do main. And add some more lines. Why not? 
and closing curly. And then in here, I'm going to say duck color gets vec4. We'll do zero red, all green, zero blue, and we'll just have uh, opaque here. All right, but again, alpha is something we'll explore later. So there's our vertex shader code. There's our fragment shader code. Here's all the code. No big deal. In the next video, I'm going to compile these. I'm going to install them to OpenGL, link them, and tell OpenGL to use them. And if they work properly, every single pixel inside of our triangle should be green.